Hey everyone, I'm going to be doing a video today that's a little different than what I normally do. I usually don't do software reviews or software videos at all. Um, but I want to talk about a program called WinX DVD Ripper Platinum. And this is not a review of the program. I actually liked the program. It works really fast to rip DVDs. I have a fast computer, so it took about five minutes for each movie, which was great. But I ran into a problem that I didn't discover until after I was done ripping 600 DVDs. Now, when I ripped my first few movies, I would check the properties and make sure that it was producing proper surround sound. And what it told me was that it was outputting to six channels, just like I had in the settings. So I trusted that every file that I was ripping was being converted to surround sound. The other thing I would do was check the video. I'd watch the video back for just a couple minutes, make sure everything looked good and all the settings were working properly. So everything looked good. I checked my file. It said it was out. It had outputted to six channels. Great. Awesome. So I continued on with the project. Now, this program, WinX DVD Ripper, uh, urges you to try before you buy. Test it out. Make sure it works for you. Make sure it works on your computer before you buy it. So it was. As I told you, I checked the properties, uh, the, the right-clicked on the file, checked the property, had six channels, watched the video back, everything was working great. Fine, excellent. But you see, the thing is, at the end of this project, some of the movies did not look good. They were not filling the entire screen. And these were older DVDs. They were not designed for our modern TVs. So... I wanted to fix those by upscaling them just a little bit to fill the screen. I imported it into a video editing program. I actually used both Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. I happen to like the results better with DaVinci Resolve. It actually processed it way faster. So when I did that, I upscaled the video. It looked great, but then I decided to just go look at the surround sound. I wanted to make sure that the channels were lining up properly. Now, not everybody's going to be able to do this. I'm a video editor, so I know what I'm looking at. I know the waveforms. I know the, how it's supposed to be set up. I know what you know, what's proper, what's not. So I know a lot of people aren't going to be able to do this. But in any case, when I went to go do that, I noticed something. I noticed that WinX Ripper was not actually creating proper surround sound yes it was creating six channels but what it was doing was taking the original six channels from the dvd movie and then during the output process when i was ripping was then converting them into a stereo soundtrack only putting the audio in the right and the left and then leaving the remaining four channels blank no audio well, that's not surround sound. So now as you, the consumer, who doesn't have a video editor and wouldn't even go to edit the video, you're going to be ripping DVDs and then checking on the properties and seeing, oh, yep, it is correctly uh, processing it as six channels, which is surround sound. And just to be clear, six channels is 5.1. 5.1, what that means is five channels, which is your front right, your center, your front left, your rear right, and your rear left. Point one is your LFE. That is your subwoofer. So together they make six channels. So this program wasn't doing that properly. And I unfortunately found out the hard way at the end. But most people, again, won't be doing what I'm doing. They may not fix the videos. They may not even notice it or... They don't care. Maybe they don't have a TV, the proper TV. Maybe they're using an old TV, whatever. But even if you do fix the video in a video editing program and upscale, maybe you didn't check the surround sound. Maybe you didn't look at every channel. Or if you don't even know about waveforms, then you're not going to know what it's supposed to look like. And therefore, you're going to trust that what you have is actual surround sound. But the truth is, it's not. And I'm going to show you all of this. I'm going to take you through the process, show you the settings, and show you what happens. So the reason why I decided to do this video is because I believe there is a flaw 
with the program itself. So I contacted the company and I told them about it. I was very friendly. I said, I think you should be aware. And I've included screenshots to show you and prove what I'm saying, that there is a problem. And I explained the problem and they tried to deny it. First, they say, well, why don't you try AVI setting? Well, AVI is not feasible. AVI is a much larger file size. And if I was to go and create AVI files for 600 DVDs, I would not even come close to having enough hard drive space. Most people wouldn't. Then, if you're going to do what I'm doing, which is all of your DVD files, all of the stuff that you're ripping, is for the purpose of being accessed through a media server. I'm going to be using Plex. It's like my own Netflix. So I could watch all my movies whenever I want using that service. So Plex reads MP4 and MKV. It doesn't read AVI. And again, trying to stream AVI, that giant file size, I'm not really sure how well that'll work. But either way, I don't think Plex reads AVI. So it's not a feasible option. And again, the file size is just too big. I, I can't work with that. Not only that, I go through and do all the work of, of ripping 600 DVDs and then I got to convert all 600 files to MP4. Why can't the program just do it? So to me, that was a cop out. So anyways, I write back to them and explain about AVI and all this and that. And they miss my message and they say, you need to try this setting. Now, it's a setting that I don't even have, that can't, didn't even come with my version of the program. So I don't even know what that setting is. But either case, I went and explained it and said, look, you have a flaw. There is a problem with your MP4 setting. It's not properly processing surround sound. Then they made a claim that, um, well, we don't say it does. We don't say, we don't advertise that it does that. Yes, you do. It's right there in the program. It's an output setting. It says it right there, MP4, audio output, six channels. Six channels is not stereo sound. Six channels is not anything else but surround sound. That's what six channels are. That's why there are six channels. It's not six channels of the same audio track. Six channels is there for 5.1. That's the purpose of it. So you are deceiving people into believing that they're getting six channels when they're not. So my gripe is that I just wanted the company to take responsibility for it. Again, it's not a bad piece of software. It's not a scam. It's just that I don't think they are aware that the program isn't working properly. If you do what most people would do and just check the properties, you see, oh, it says it has six channels. Even if you listen to it back in your stereo system, it may sound good, but you may not even notice. And a lot of times surround sound is subtle. In many cases, it might be a little bird chirp over here or a little gunshot over there or a little scream back there. It's subtle because you don't want to overdo it. You don't want the surround sound to overtake the movie. So most people are going to play it and not even notice it. But if you're like me, I do notice those things and I'm going to notice that I'm not getting any sound from my rear. That didn't sound right. Um, but I'm not getting any sound from behind me. Well, that didn't sound right either. Either way, I want to make sure that I'm getting the proper surround sound. And so the program is not doing it. I'm going to prove it all. So my gripe with the company is I want them to investigate their own software and go through the testing that I'm about to show you to see if that indeed is a problem and then fix it and figure out why it's doing that. And I'm not going to bash them. I don't want people to not buy from them. But you should definitely be aware that this is a problem and also check. Maybe you're like me. Maybe you've already scanned 600 DVDs and you think they're in surround sound. And then you go do what I just, what I'm about to tell you and you go put it into an editing program and you look at the waveforms and you see, oh, wait a minute now. All of these channels are blank. Maybe it works for you. Maybe there isn't a problem. It could be just a version. Maybe this particular version of the program has got a problem. Maybe there's something there. So I think it's important that if you have this program, test it out. I'm going to show you what to do. And then if you find that you have a problem, let the company know. The more people that contact them about this and let them know, then I think the more serious they're going to take it.
But right now, they only have me telling them this. And even though I'm showing them the evidence, it's still not good enough. But if they get multiple people contacting, contacting them with screenshots and showing this, this, this same problem, then they're going to be forced to look into it and go, wait a minute, our software has a problem. We need to fix it. And then they'll do an update and maybe give everybody the update. If you're new to the program and you haven't purchased it yet and you're just trying it out, now you know. And then you know that the program isn't for you. So uh, I've been using a program called Wonder Fox DVD Ripper, which works great. It's a little slower than this one, but it works great. I had no issues with it. It's doing everything properly. So that's a great alternative if this program doesn't work for you. Now, if you do own the program, again, go and test your files. Take a look and see if this problem happened to you. And if it did, test it out. Grab a DVD, test it out, and see if you can replicate the problem or if the problem's not there anymore, whatever it may be. If it is there, contact the company and let them know. Now I'm going to show you uh, the process and exactly what the problem is. Okay, we are here in WinX DVD Ripper Platinum. So what you would do is go over to where it says Disk and click on that. So here's the movie that we're going to rip. It's Pearl Harbor. Click OK. Now, it recommends the file format, which is the file format I would use, which is MP4. But for whatever purposes you have, there are plenty of options here for you to choose from. But for the sake of this, we're go going to choose MP4. Now, when I was having my run-in with this company, they were suggesting... AVI video, but they were showing me on their screenshot another choice of AVI. There were two that had DTS. This one does not have that. It's nowhere here. So in any case, this is the best format. And besides, AVI is a much bigger file. You don't want AVI if you're going to be doing a lot of these. I had 600 to do, and my media server also won't read AVI. It'll read MP4 or MKV. So this is what we choose. Now, as you can see, it has chosen Title I as the movie, which is correct, and it's usually correct. Usually these other ones are menu items and etc. Maybe special features. So here's the movie, 2 hours, 8 minutes long, 16 by 9 wide, AC3, 6 channel. So I want to make sure that I am outputting to surround sound. Now this also has a DTS choice, so you could choose DTS as well. So we're going to go here. Now here is the settings, MP4 video. If you have a different video co codec, for example, H.265, you might want to choose that. Um, frame rate, it's always best to keep it original to what, what the movie is. So that way everything is pretty much... Uh, exact. So I want to go here to audio options and you can see I have the sample rate set at 48, uh, 48 uh, bit rate 256, channels 6. Now if I open this up in the drop down you'll see you have a choice of doing 2 which would be stereo, 4 which I assume, I, I don't really know much about 4 channel surround sound. I believe that means that it doesn't have the LFE. It's just in the front speakers and the rear. Um, but some older movies will have four channels. So if, if you see that come up, you're going to want to choose that as your output. But this one is six, six channels. So understand now, as you can clearly see, that WinX DVD Ripper is going to take my DVD and rip it to this file format. MP4 video with six channels, which, as I told you, six channels is surround sound. That's what we're all told. That's the way it works. That's what we all know. It's surround sound. So I click OK. Actually, I'm going to click Apply to All. Now, um, before we hit Run, I want to choose High Quality Engine. I want to get the best quality video I can. Choose your file, uh, your destination folder, uh, etc. So there you go. Now, just before we continue, you also have a little options thing here. 
So you could change your output folder here, your snapshot shot folder. Um, you could change your default language. So we're not making any changes there. You can also scan it as an ISO image if you wanted to. But that's pretty much it. Now, one last thing here, you have deinterlace. The only time you want deinterlace, and you will notice this if you preview the video and watch a little bit of it, you'll see these like lines that appear, especially when there's motion. This is typically from videos that were shot with an actual video camera and not a film camera. Um, television, for example. So you might have uh, a TV series that you're doing. And if you play it back, you're going to notice the TV series has these lines in it. So you're going to want to click deinterlace. But for the majority of films, you don't need to do that. So now I click run. Okay. So now I'm going to show you the file that's been created. Here it is, Pearl Harbor. I'm going to right click it. This is what most people would do if they were checking the file. And you're going to see it has all the information. Here's today's date, the size of the movie. Okay, so now I'm going to go to details. I want to show you something that, so we're very clear on this. Here's the audio, and here are the settings that I had chosen. My audio sample rate, 48. Channels, 6. My bit rate, it's here at, it says 243. But this is important here. 6 channels, 6. So now, if I was to test this program to make sure it's working, I would check it and say, oh yes, it did do it as six channels. Great, I'm all set. Then I'm going to continue on ripping more DVDs. Also, I like to watch the video and watch at least a minute of it to make sure it looks good, make sure all the settings work. Great. So that's what most people would do. But I noticed on some of my older DVDs that they were only filling some of the screen, like about the center. So it wasn't filling the entire screen. So I had to upscale the films a little bit. So I did that in DaVinci Resolve. So here's DaVinci Resolve. Here is the movie I just did. So I'm going to drag this down over here. I'm going to make this into a timeline. So I know that Hollywood movies choose 5.1 film. Only a few will actually use just regular standard 5.1. But the majority will use film. And the whole point of this is that you want to make sure that that the channels are lining up perfectly. So your right channel is going into your right, your left, um, uh, your left rear channel is going into the left rear. If you were to choose 5.1, it might actually swap them, and you're going to notice the channels are wrong. Now, I happen to know this just from video editing. Most people aren't going to know that, and they're actually going to have a screwed up soundtrack. So remember when you're doing usually a Hollywood film, you're going to choose 5.1. But in most cases, you won't even need to come in here. But to show you what the problem is, this is what we're going to do. I hit Create. Okay, now I'm going to open up the timeline, and I'm going to go. So we're in the timeline. So all you see here in this waveform is a mash of audio. These are all the channels all mixed together. But if we want to look at them separately, we're going to go here to Fairlight. So I click on Fairlight. Now I'm going to, I have to open it up so you can actually see the waveforms. All right, so here you can see the exact problem that's happening. As you can see, it took all of the audio from the movie, all six channels, and mashed them together into a stereo soundtrack, left and center. So it's wrong. It didn't put any audio in the right speaker, in the left surround and the right surround and in the subwoofer the lfe now if i go all the way down the timeline look nowhere they're blank so what it did was create a fake six channel soundtrack it's not proper now if i go back here uh let me go back here i'm going to do this again and i'm going to create another timeline but this time i'm going to use just 5.1 click create now we're going to open that up do the same thing we're going to go to fairlight and look what happened so now when i use and this is showing what the program is actually doing it just created a standard right and left stereo soundtrack 
So this is also what I was saying, that 5.1 and 5.1 film are different because it'll place the audio tracks in different locations. So here, as you can see, now we have left and rear. But this is what the program is doing. It is outputting in, outputting it as 5.1, but not really doing it correctly. It's actually making it into a left and right stereo soundtrack. That's not proper. Okay, so now I want to show you one that was done in another program that worked properly. So here's the problem what led me to discovering this um, issue with the audio. So as you can see here, I want to click Inspector. The video doesn't fill the whole screen, so you've got this big black box around it. So what I do is I zoom in a little, and now it's fixed. So when I did this, I decided to go look at the audio tracks. And as you could see down here, it's just one, it, it basically becomes one waveform. But if we want to look at it separately, you can actually do it here, but I find it better to go into Fairlight. So now I'm in Fairlight, and you can see the proper audio tracks. So here's your left, here's your center, here's your right, here's your LS, uh, your LS, uh, that's um, left, left uh, surround, right surround, and then LFE. So you could see here, and, and the, one of the ways to tell left and right is they'll look very similar, and you can see how similar they are. And then if we go to somewhere where there's just dialogue, for example, um, you'll see that the dialogue is in the center. So as you can see here, this is a scene with dialogue, and it's in the center. So we know that this is all correct. But if I keep going down the line, you'll see all the audio tracks are proper. So that's the way it's supposed to work. Obviously, the program WinX DVD Ripper is not correctly processing the surround sound. It lets you believe it is, but unless you do what I do and go into an actual video editing program, you're not going to know that. And most people wouldn't know that. So many people are going to assume that they are properly getting surround sound when they are not. So my suggestion is if you haven't bought this program, test it out first, try all the settings, and get this program here. It's DaVinci Resolve. It's free. And do what I did. If you have another editing program where you're allowed to see individual tracks, you can use that as well. Also, maybe uh, it'll work for you where it's not working for me. But you want to make sure you test that out. A lot of people don't know to do this because most people wouldn't do this. Are you a fan of all things paranormal? Well, check out my brand new website called ParanormalAliens.com featuring things of a darker nature on all sorts of really cool products. You could get wall clocks, mugs, t-shirts, all kinds of wonderful things. Just go to ParanormalAliens.com and check it out and also know that many of the items there actually ship for free. I ship worldwide, so check it out today, ParanormalAliens.com. We'll see you there, paranormalaliens.com.